Hi, welcome back to Rusted Junk Garage. Today we're going to work on the 55 Chev Junker Truck's rear suspension and we're going to fix an issue with a 4 inch carriage bolt. So stick around, you're going to want to see this. Okay, we got the old 55 Chev up in the air on jack stands and let me get under here and show you what we got going here. So, when I installed the new 3 inch lowering springs, there's a carriage bolt that captures both of the shackles there. And the ones that came with are only 3.5 inch. And they do not capture in that nylock. So, what I ended up doing was looking at some of my old hardware. And they're 4 inch, so Pulled out a couple of those, cleaned them up, run the uh, die down them. They're in good shape, not bent. So we're going to take this this out, put the four and a half inch or the four inch in, so the nylock captures that, and uh, I'll feel a lot safer going down the road. So let's get started on that. Okay, we have it up on jack stands. Both front wheels are chocked, uh, both sides, front and back. I've got the uh, floor jack just underneath the rear end. And she's jacked up high enough to where both tires rotate. So hopefully we have all the weight off these springs. So we're going to start to back off this 916 bolt and see what we got to do to get this changed so let's get going with that so that is gotta be nice if that would come out but I I'm not thinking that's gonna happen So, now, I'm not sure what I'm going to do here. I don't know how much tension is on that. Seems to be quite a bit, so I'm a little bit leery on popping that, because I don't know how far that's going to want to drop down. Well, we ended up just cutting the the carriage head off that shorter three and a half inch bolt. And then we're going to slide this one in. We're still going to use the same uh, nylock there a 3 8 20 so let me show you what it looks like up underneath here We've got some light I think we're okay all right you can see where it's going to go in there and I'm going to put the nut on the back side that nylock so we're going to slip that one up in there and tighten it up this side's done and we're going to repeat it on the other side Okay, hope you guys can see this. This is the the old new carriage bolt and we're going to use that same nylock. It was never into the nylock part of it the other way and these are uh, 916 so these are squared off so it catches the carriage bolt as this retains the uh, the shackle there so there we go. Gotta get the red angle on it. Okay. It's capturing the nylock there. Yeah, we've got to get a socket. 
think it's gonna take too long with, without. Okay, let's see if socket will help us out here a little bit. Might not be able to get that in there. Yeah, that's gonna be the case. So we got Let's try a ratcheting 916th. I think that's gonna do it. Can't get a super long throw because you come up against the bed there. It's getting it done. This would be good in peace of mind. I never never cared for that if it didn't capture the nylock. Uh, I checked them a couple times. I haven't driven the truck much. I kind of kept an eye on them because I didn't want an incident out, but now it's going to be, uh, it's going to be good. I don't have to worry about it. Okay, let me see if I can show you that up there. All right, if you see that, hopefully the light's okay. Then it is oh, about three threads to the nylock, which is pretty much what they say you should have. So I'm good with that. I think that's going to be a lot better. And like I said, we ended up using that, uh, that old hardware that came off the truck. I don't know if it's original or not. I, I'm assuming that it is, but it, uh, it worked and we didn't have to spend any money to make this fix, so we're happy with that. Cut off. Again, we're using the used hardware. These are these are four inch versus the three and a half, and it's going to go in that way. Nylock. We chased the threads on that, so hopefully I get the camera set up. So let's see. And I cut this one off also. That way I didn't have to break the shackle apart. Got it jacked up and the wheels are down far enough and just the jack underneath the rear end there. So I thought that would be the easier way to do it. I don't know, but it, uh, it seemed to work. So we'll get this nut on here. Get a little better angle. And while I'm under here, I'm going to kind of do a nut and bolt on the, uh, the U-bolts, hold the rear end, and, uh, just on the shock bolts. Since I put these springs in, I don't know, I've probably driven my truck around 100 miles. I'm not 100% sure on that, but uh, since I got it up, I'm going to do a nut and bolt on that too, and just just to make sure everything is good so I'll bring you back when I get that done and we'll have this thing wrapped up okay we got her back on the ground looking good change those rear shackle capture carriage bolts did a nut and bolt on the springs and the shocks actually got a little couple uh Turns, well not turns, but a little tighter on those U-bolts for the uh, for the spring, so glad I did that today. But anyway, she's back on the ground. Uh, pretty simple process to do that. Um, all we really needed was a cheap $6 hacksaw, a couple 916 wrenches, three-quarter inch open in a box. These are the Short ones we cut off, a pair of safety glasses, and gloves, and the light and stuff, and then of course the stuff that did the heavy work. So it's all good. Happy to have that behind us and did the nut and bolt, so we're good to go. Anyway, 
Thanks for joining us today. Rusted junk garage. Out in the garage, wrenching on the junk. Got her done. One step closer to the next project. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.